Hi guys, right I've got another video here to show you on Chinese fakery uh, It's a little bit longer than my last video so please bear with me because you're going to find this very interesting um, Now just for, we'll start off we'll take bipolar transistors and I'll just give you um, a bit of insight into um, semiconductor manufacturing So here we have um, a 2SD1207, it's um, NPN bipolar transistor we used oh, about 15 years ago in video recorders now when these are actually manufactured, um, they go through a lot of different tests. So just taking one test as a typical example here, we've got the DC current gain. Now if we move over to the data sheet here, um, at 100 milliamp, the guaranteed minimum DC current gain is 100 and the maximum is 560. So if you can imagine thousands of these coming off a production line, what the manufacturers will do is they'll run all these tests. Now, taking this one for an example, if it falls outside of the minimum and maximum parameters for the current game, um, it goes into the reject bin. Now, these transistors are obviously producing millions of them. They're not all going to be perfect. There's going to be a hell of a lot of rejects. Now, they're not simply thrown away because they have a scrap value. So if we move over to here, um, taking this for an example, it's... Um, 2SD898 beats a line output transistor for a TV from about 30 years ago. It's TO3 case. Now this bottom bit, if you were to scrape that plating off, this is actually made of copper as a heat conductor. So um, it does have quite a good scrap value even if it doesn't work. So if you can imagine um, the semiconductor manufacturers, millions of these are popping off the production line and they're all tested. Now, the important thing about semiconductors is when a semiconductor fails to meet one of the specifications um, given by the manufacturers, it won't be marked. Now, if you look on there, these are marked up. If this was a reject, it would have no marking at all on the case. You just have um, just a blank transistor with nothing on. So I'll stop the camera. I'll just move you over somewhere else. Right, so... Um here we have a practical wireless magazine from November 1958. Um, now you might recognise the man on the front, he's a lot younger there. It's actually Clive Sinclair, or Sir Clive as they call him now, a British inventor. And he invented the world's first pocket radio. Um, now semiconductors have been manufactured for a long time now, and since time immemorial, uh, the manufacturers have been producing rejects, or... To put it a better word, out of specification. They're working devices, but they're out of the manufacturer's specification. Now, what Clive Sinclair did when he started as a, a teenager, he realised that there was potential in manufacturer's rejects. Just because it didn't come up to the manufacturer's specification, it didn't mean to say that it didn't come up with some specification. So what he used to do, he used to buy... Um, rejected semiconductors by the millions and he'd test them all out for individual gain and he'd mark them all up um, with different um, a different spot to indicate like a red spot for a high gain a white spot uh, for a low gain and what he did he actually produced this radio he had it published in the magazine and when you came to buy these semiconductors, because he'd remarked them up, you could only get them from him. So it was quite a good business idea, and um, it made him a lot of money in the end. Um, now, this is dated 1958, so you can see how long that ago is. Well, just move the camera to another magazine. Right, okay, so here we've got um, Everyday Electronics magazine, um, which dated June... 1974 now continuing with the manufacturer's reject i've highlighted a page here and i'll just turn this over um, right so in 1974 a company called buy prepack suppliers of semiconductors to the world now as a kid i used to buy these from here and if we move down to the listing here we've got unmarked untested packs so you've got here 50 transistors with no number on because they're out of specification now when you buy these they could be absolutely anything they could be 
rated for 20 volts they could be rated for 100 volts and because there's no number on them you don't actually know what they are now in a circuit running say off a 9 volt battery you could put any transistor in and the chances are it would work um, now just um, I'll move you over and I'll show you some unmarked which I bought about 40 years ago and I've still got them from um, by pre-packed semiconductors in the 70s just let me stop the camera again right here we go here's a, a couple of little things i've been able to find in my archives um there is an ic it's brand new but there's no number on it so it could be absolutely anything um there's another ic um if you look on the top it's all brand new in the package but there's no numbers on it at all that's another one there another eight pins probably some sort of op amp uh, that's got no numbers on it and here we've got a um, power diode um, another out of spec manufacturer's reject and I turn it all the way around you can see there's no numbers on there right now here's what we're coming up to now what in today's day and age what the Chinese do is they will buy thousands of manufacturer's rejects and this is the hardest thing to spot with them um, with fake semiconductors now um, if you looked at my other video we've covered um, parts that have been rubbed down the numbers been rubbed off them to disguise the identity but with manufacturers rejects the the um, the parts the number is applied after the device has been tested so if you can imagine a dustbin with 50,000 of these in no numbers and somebody in China buys them um, they take an order and they print on the device the number that the customer wants. You could actually be getting absolutely anything, um, but um, they've bought them up with no numbers on. They don't even know what they are. So, moving over to the part of the video now, um, we've got um, a Toshiba IGBT. It's GT30F131. Um, on this side, we've got the real one. On that side, uh, there's actually two fake ones. Now you can't, it's going to be difficult to zoom in the camera, and if I'll have a go, I don't know if you can just, you probably can't see them on the camera, these haven't been rubbed down, oh, you can see that's in focus now, um, they've not rubbed down, they're absolutely brand spanking new, they're completely unmarked, but they're both fakes, um, now the chances are these will be um, a load of out of spec or manufacturer's rejects that somebody's bought up in China and they apply the numbers on that people want. If we can move to that one there, you see they both pretend to be a GT30F131, but if you look at that, there's a hole and also the legs are very short. And if you look at that one, there's no hole at the top and the legs are twice as long. So you can see where I'm coming from now. These both cannot be GT30F131s. Now because they've not been sanded down, because they're absolutely brand spanking new, it's impossible to tell just at a quick look between a real one and a fake one. The only way you can tell is by actually comparing it with a real one. Now what the, um, what the Chinese do to make them look more authentic they put them in a packet like that which is exactly the same packet as you get when you buy a genuine one I'll just stop the video and we'll get the the real one out right so now if we take a look at the real one which is in um, the same packet as the fake ones which has been copied um, you can see the top of the device there there's a hole and also the legs are short um, if we look at the fake one now bearing in mind this is absolutely brand new it's not been rubbed down there's no sign of no sign telltale signs of sanding marks there is no hole there and the actual legs are quite a lot longer um, than the real one now if we turn over the real one here's another giveaway that is the back of the real one if you look at the die um, there's a little black bit there I'll just move them a bit closer, that's it. If you look at the real one, 
there's a black bit there if you look at the faint one there isn't and that is another way you can tell a fake but um, because these are more than likely out of spec rejects it could be you could get absolutely anything you could get a device rated at 50 volts you could get a device rated a thousand volts the only time you'll know you've got a fake is when you fit this in your your tv in the board and uh, it either blows up and takes another load of parts with you or um, um, sometimes they'll run for a few hours and then they'll overheat and they'll blow later but um, because these are absolutely brand new um, it's easier to fool people um, the only way you're going to tell because they're so clever at this the only way you tell the fake one from a real one is to compare the one that you've got with the one you take out um, now I don't know if you can see on the camera but here's another telltale sign um, let's see and get it focused on the real one yeah on the real one the actual inscription of the device is painted on but if you look on this one under a very very powerful microscope it's not painted on it's actually laser etched into the surface so that is there another indication that you bought a duffer like I say the worst thing that'll do is you'll turn it on it'll blow up straight away if you're lucky if you get something that's a bit similar to a 30 f31 it might even run for a few hours or a few days before it blows up so well, there we go guys and um, thanks for watching hope you enjoy the video subscribe to my channel for some more okay goodbye